Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I want to look at cast diagrams and trig equations. This video might be helpful if you're doing either high-end GCC or A-level, but if you're doing A-level I'm going to do another video using trig identities for some harder exam style questions. As ever, please do get yourself a pen and piece of paper and pause this video to work through it at your own pace. Sometimes I do fast forward portions of the video when I'm doing working out. I really want you to do that working out for yourself. So pause, rewind, fast forward, do whatever you need to do. I also wanted to thank you to everyone who's left lovely comments on my other videos. I love hearing when these videos are helpful to you. It really, really makes my day. Also a little apology for not getting more videos out sooner. It's kind of difficult to find the time when at the moment this work is completely unpaid and unfunded. But if you want to support my work and if you do find these videos helpful, I'd love it if you could have a look at my Patreon page and consider supporting me through that. Anyway, I'm going to dive in now, so please do grab a pen and paper and let's get started. Let me start by introducing the basic cast diagram. Now it's called cast because of the letters C, a, S and T, which go around in the quadrants, but we always start with this quadrant here, so don't let it throw you that we label it starting with the C, it's just that ASTC diagram isn't quite as catchy. So we do always start from this quadrant here. And what we're doing is we're imagining that we start from this starting point and we turn around anti-clockwise through the diagram. If this is our starting point then, this is zero degrees and we turn around anti-clockwise to 90, 180, 270 and if we come around again that will be 360 and so on. You can add 360 on to all these angles if you want to turn around again and again. Now these letters, C-A-S-T, stand for what is positive in these quadrants. So in the first quadrant here, 0 to 90, that's the acute angle, 0 to 90. All of them are positive. Sine, cos and tan are all positive. In this quadrant here, S stands for sine. That's because sine is positive, but the others are negative. So tan, cos are negative in this quadrant. T stands for tan, because tan is positive here. Sine and cos are negative. And cos is positive here. Sine and tan are negative. Now we always start out with the acute angle in this quadrant. This is our starting quadrant. So if you've got an angle that you're trying to measure, um, the calculator will give you the acute angle, the 0 to 90 angle. Now as we turn around the diagram, we still want the angle that we get from the starting point of 0. So say we want this angle here in this quadrant then remember I said that the calculator only gives you the acute angle. So that's the purple one that we've got, the purple, the little acute angle here. And that's going to be the same. So to work out the blue angle, the one that we're wanting, we'll do 180 degrees minus the acute angle. Similarly, as we move round to the next quadrant, if you can see that orange, if we want this large angle here, again, we've got the acute angle, which will be this time from the axis to here. So the orange angle will be 180 plus that acute angle. Finally, if we want an angle in the last quadrant, sorry if this is getting a bit complicated, this diagram, <laughs> Then we'll want all the way around to there, and that will be 360 minus the acute. So we're always measuring counterclockwise from the zero. Um, in this quadrant, it's 180 minus, this quadrant, 180 plus, and this quadrant, 360 minus. I think I've made that diagram a little bit complicated, so let's do some examples and it should become a little bit clearer. So here we start with a basic trig equation, and you'll always be given a range with these questions of 
Normally it's 0 to 360, but it could change. But we're going to mostly use 0 to 360. So to get the first solution, like you did at GCSE, you'll do an inverse sine of 0 0.5. And if you put that in the calculator, you'll find that the acute angle is 30 degrees. Now let's have a look at the cast diagram. In this question, we know that sine is positive. That's a positive value. So we need the sine quadrant. And we also need the all quadrant, where all of them are positive. The A quadrant is the acute angle 30 degrees. So that one we've got already. But we also want the solution in this quadrant. Now remember when I said, this might make more sense now, the 30 is the acute angle, but the angle that we want is the one that goes all the way around until there. So that's 180 degrees minus 30. 180 degrees minus 30 gives us 150 degrees. So in the range of 0 to 360, going around once, those are the only two solutions. Let's have a go with a question with cos now. So the first angle, the acute angle, we get from the inverse cos operation. And my calculator says that's 53.1 degrees. Um, again, we're in the range of 0 to 360, so that's just once around the cast. The acute is where they're all positive, and we also want cos, cos is positive. So that, so that quadrant is 360 degrees minus the acute. So 360 minus 53.1 gets us. Finally, let's look at an example with tan. Again, we're going to start with the acute angle. So we've got our acute and we want this quadrant as well, and that was 180 plus. So 180 plus 50.2. And my calculator says that's 230.2. These are, of course, angles. We should, I should be writing degrees on there. Good, okay, let's look at some examples now where they're negative. This time we've got a negative value, so we know sine is negative. So actually, instead of looking at these two quadrants, we want these two quadrants, because we want where we know that sine is negative. So just these bottom two quadrants. Now, normally we start off with the acute angle, of course, and that's the only one that we are given from the calculator. So let's start like we do usually to get that acute angle and to do that we'll make this positive. So we're going to do that by finding the solution in this quadrant here even though we're not going to use that one. So we're going to do inverse sine of, of positive 0 0.2 just to get the acute angle and that's 11.5 degrees but we're not going to list that as a solution because we're now going to use that in these two quadrants, 11.5. So we're going to do 180 plus and 360 minus. So in this quadrant here, I get 191.5, and that quadrant I get 348.5. By the way, you can always check your answers very easily to these questions. If you if you substitute in one of your answers back into here as x, so in your calculator, do sine of 191.5 then it should give you a value very close to minus 0.2 it might be you know minus 0.19999 or something but it should be fairly close this time we've got a cos example when it's negative so we're going to use the other two quadrants again we're going to start by pretending it's positive just to get the acute angle and then we'll use the acute angle in these two quadrants. So in here I'm doing 180 minus. And here 180 plus. So 
Good, let's do a tan example. Again, this is negative, so I want where tan is negative. I want to get the acute angle by making that positive. And I'm going to do 180 minus and 360 minus. Well done if you're starting to get those. I am going quite fast here, so please make sure you do plenty of practice. Now I just want to look at an example where the range is actually different from the 0 to 360 as we've done in the other ones. This time it's minus 180 to 180. And I'm going to do that in two separate cast diagrams. So I'm going to do 0 up to 180. I'm also going to do 0 backwards, so negative, the other way, back to 180 that way. So two separate cast diagrams. In this question, cos is positive, so we've got this quadrant here and this quadrant here. So looking at the positive 0 to 180, that's the acute angle which we can get. So the 60 degrees is the first one there, and then the other, the other solution we want is going backwards. So it's coming down, and this is now the acute angle, look, 0 to 90. So it's going to be, again, it's going to be 60 degrees, but it's going to be minus 60. So if you get a range that's minus 180 to 80, for cos and tan, you can do that because going 0 to minus 180, you, you'll get a cos or a tan solution. So I'm not going to bother doing a sign question of one of these because it won't have a solution going back this way. It will only have the two solutions in the positive range. So let's do a tan example in that range now. So this time tan is positive, so I want A and T. So again, this one's the acute angle. And the second solution, going backwards through the negative range, there'll be one in here. So this time it's going to be 180 minus that acute angle because we're measuring this way around. So we're not quite at 180, 180 minus. So 180 minus 38.7. Good. Please make sure you do plenty of practice of those. Get a textbook or some questions. You can actually make up your own questions with these. Just pick any old number here and um, you can check your answers by putting them back into X. Now we're going to look at some more complicated examples. Okay, we're going to finish with these four examples which involve some unpicking. So these top two are when the trig value is caught up in some other stuff, so that needs undoing first. These ones are where the trig angle has got some stuff going on, so you need to do the trig bit first and then unpick the answers. Do pause the video and have a go yourself at these before or after I go through them. So let's take this one first. We're going to plus one and divide by two to unpick the sine x. So we're going to solve that equation first. Now we can proceed as usual, get the acute angle and look at the cast diagram. So here we want this quadrant, which is 180 minus. This question is very similar. That, that stuff needs unpicking first, so have a go at that. So in this question, we want this bottom quadrant as well, which is 360 minus. But if you 
spotted this, I've made this range bigger just for fun, to see what would happen. It's 360 times 2 is 720, so it's two turns of the cast diagram to get up to 720. So all we need to do, if you're doing two turns, is add 360 onto both your answers there. So let's add 360. Now for these bottom two questions, we need to do the trig, we need to undo the trig before we unpick the inner functions. So we're going to do that trig bit first. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the next angle before I even think about unpicking that. If you try and unpick that at this point, you'll get into you'll get into a mess, and that's a really common mistake. So don't just don't be tempted to unpick that just yet. Get the next angle first. So we want 180 plus. Now we can solve to get x. So we need to take off 30 and divide by two. Okay, so I did it separately to each of those. I'm picking to get 10.1 and 100.1. This one's very similar, to, so have a go at this. Alright, so this one's a negative one, so I'm doing the, finding the acute angle first by doing the inverse sine of the positive 0 0.8. And by the way, I've, I've put brackets around that, and I don't think I have anywhere else, but you can write it with or without brackets, the calculator always has brackets, but there we go. So the acute is 53.1 and now we can use the cast diagram to find the other two answers. So we're doing 180 plus and 360 minus. So now we know that 3x minus 10 gives us both of these answers. Now we can unpick that by plusing 10 and dividing by 3. And there you have it. We've gone from quite basic right up to pretty complicated there. Do keep practicing those. I know I've gone quite quickly. Um, play it again if you need to and do, do the questions on your own for practice. And I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching and have fun.